السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المسلمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Welcome to another live episode of the Gems of the Heart where we try to purify our hearts and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who they, their hearts are pure and as we heard many times before this is our duty on the face of earth is to make sure that our hearts are purified and when we talk about purification that means there are things that would go against this there is things that would pollute our hearts and our job in this life is to constantly purify our hearts purify our hearts from shirk from associating partners with Allah and the roots of that to purify our hearts from al-ghafla forgetfulness from sins from anything that takes the person away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us to worship him alone and we need to make sure that we're steadfast and firm upon this till the last moment till the moment of death and how can we attain this there's no way a person can attain this except by purification of our hearts and the subject is such an important one it's the entire life it's the entire religion of al-islam and that is to purify ourselves from sins to be upon the truth and to be steadfast upon this till the last moment of our life inshallah ta'ala this episode will talk about something that is so essential when it comes to the purification of our hearts and that is the names and attributes of Allah but specifically two of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are mentioned in the Quran which is Al-Afu and Al-Ghafur Al-Afu and Al-Ghafur we'll talk about the meanings but in the subject of forgiveness forgiveness is basically is the main thing after the Tawheed after the oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that a believer is in need of to purify himself to purify himself when we look into this life and we always have to connect this life to the hereafter and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to always give us this reality in our hearts what would the, be the outcome or the ultimate evil that is waiting for the human beings it's the hellfire and the hellfire Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it very clear in the Quran and in the sunnah of the Prophet sallam, that it's the place of the disbelievers the sinners and so on and what is the thing that would take the person away from the hellfire and for the person to enter Jannah because in the hereafter it's either Jahannam the hellfire or Jannah the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is no third place for the human beings so what is the thing that would saves the person from the hellfire to enter the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is the Tawheed in Allah la yaghfir wa yushraka bi وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forgive and yushraka bihi that people will associate partners with him and he forgives everything other than that so to save oneself from the eternal living of the hellfire what saves the person from being in the hellfire forever is to die in the state of al-islam to die in the state of the tawheed on la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah there is no one worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad وسلم, is the final messenger of Allah to be a Muslim but that does not by itself like this saves the person from entering the hellfire it saves the person if he dies on that state from being in the hellfire forever but a person might still fall into the hellfire and there are ayat of the Quran a hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that talks about the usa the sinners among the ummah of the Prophet وسلم, that some of them would be forgiven some of them will be punished and eventually they will enter Jannah but how then to save oneself from entering the hellfire whatsoever not to be ever touched by the hellfire to enter the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be saved from being touched by the hellfire this is a serious matter how to save ourselves from this more before we give the answer which is very obvious and clear to many of us can we sustain to put our finger in, the, in a fire that is the fire of this world we won't be able to sustain the fire the fire and the pain that comes from the fire on the face of earth it's one of the worst pain that a human being can experience whatsoever that's why those who die burned they are martyrs as the Prophet ﷺ said it's a very severe pain may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all from this so and the fire of this world compared to the fire in the hereafter 
is one part out of 69 parts, as the Prophet ﷺ said, out of 70 parts. The fire in the hereafter is multiplied to the fire of this world by 69 times, as it's authentically mentioned, from the Prophet ﷺ. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called the fire in the hereafter عذابٌ مقيم, everlasting punishment, عذابٌ أليم, uh, painful punishment, عذابٌ مهين, humiliating punishment, and so on and so forth. And the different punishments uh, in the hellfire itself. So how to protect oneself from even being touched by the hellfire after the tawheed. And that is the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can talk about different actions and different deeds and so on. But what is the one thing that a believer is in need of in the day of judgment if he dies on the state of Islam is the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that comes then the importance of Worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with these two names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Al-Afu and Al-Ghafur Al-Afu, the one that pardons Al-Ghafur, the ones that forgives We need to understand the meanings of it We need to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to these names We need to have this as a duty in ourselves When we talk about the attributes of Allah, of Al-Maghfirah And the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Ghafur, Al-Ghafir and so on and all of these derivatives in the Qur'an, it's over 200 verses in the Qur'an that talks about this. But the word Al-Afu, the name Al-Afu is mentioned in five times in the Qur'an. Al-Ghafur is mentioned like 91 times or so in the Qur'an. Such an important meaning that we need to really be upon and to understand it and to believe in it and to act according to it. Someone might ask first, what is the difference between Al-Afu and Al-Ghafur? The difference when they're both mentioned together, Al-Afu is the one that pardons, means the sin is wiped. There is no more for it to be revived or to be mentioned or whatever. It's wiped as if it didn't exist. Al-Ghafur is the one that forgives, the one that pardons, yes, but covers the sins. The one that would cover the sin of the person. And he covers the evil and he basically exposed what is good. And for people to be forgiven, when they're both mentioned, Al-Afu is something closer, and something that a person would not have any of the sins or the outcome of it. And some had mentioned that Al-Ghafur, or the one that is the most forgiving, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that means the sin are forgiven, are sealed, are covered, and so on. Al-Afu, it doesn't mean that the person is being pleased with, but rather he is just pardoned, from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned these two names in, in the Quran um, uh, some few times together, and one of which in Surah Al Baqarah, uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is verse 219, when the people asked about Al Khamr wal Maisir, or wine and intoxications and gambling. They ask you about Al Khamr wal Maisir, gambling. And الخمر while intoxications. قل فيهما إثم كبير ومنافع للناس وإثمهما أكبر من نفعهما. ويسألونك ماذا ينفقون قل العفو. كذلك يبين الله لكم الآيات لعلكم تتذكرون. This is actually not the name of Allah subhanahu wa taala, but the word or the somebody. The reason why this is mentioned here is because sometimes people might misunderstand it, but it gives us the meaning of the root meaning of it. That when they asked the Prophet ﷺ about what they spend, and it was said, قُلِ العفو, say the extra, right? give the extra, give what is uh, over your needs and so on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-afu, he's the one that pardons. And this is as we see something that is not based on the, the rights or the justice, but rather extra, some, something that is extra, something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would, uh, would forgive his slaves and he would wipe the sins for them whatsoever subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-afu the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-afu and the ghafoor is mentioned together in surah al-hajj surah al-hajj verse number 60 where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says dhalika wa man aqaba bi mithli ma uqiba bihi thumma bughiya alayhi la yansurannahu Allah inna Allah la'afu wa ghafoor when it comes to retaliation and the punishment as a result of this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it clear for the ummah that a person, if he wants his right, he should not go beyond that. He should not transgress. 
And uh, if someone would transgress after the justice has been served, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make them, will make him victorious. And that's why those who are oppressed and weak, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make them victorious as long as they don't transgress. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, Inna Allah la'afuun ghafoor. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la'afu. <coughs> no doubt. By Allah, He is afu. He's the one that pardons and He's ghafoor. He forgives and He conceals and so on. This, uh, these meanings that we, as we see here, this is indeed the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that people need to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accordingly. The same way it's been mentioned in Surah Al Mujadala, just to give some examples with the verses of the Quran in Surah Al Mujadala, verses the second verse, it talks about the, the issue of Al Zihar when it's one of the ways of uh, the Talaq in Jahiliyyah where a man would uh, state to his wife that she is to him like the back of his mother, like forbidding his wife upon him. And that would cause basically abuse for the relationship. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade that and made it haram. And if someone would even dare to say such a thing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it a sin, a major sin. And the expiation of it is a very uh, heavy one for those who would do such a statement or say such a statement. That's why a person has to be careful. But uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end of this verse, he mentioned that he pardons subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even if a person fall into the sin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pardons. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, would forgive even the things that was done before the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and before the verses were revealed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave them and pardoned them. And if someone knows the, the rulings and still committed such an act and he repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do the expiation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiving subhanahu wa ta'ala. The subject of al-af, let's first discuss this. And again, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who receive the forgiveness and the pardoning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love to pardon and to forgive. And the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha, probably all of us have heard it before many times, especially at the times of Ramadan. When uh, we want to know about the dua, what to say in Laylatul Qadr, the Laylatul Qadr towards the end of Ramadan, uh, we want to make a lot of dua. And the Prophet ﷺ, when Aisha radiallahu anha, she asked him that if uh, I get to witness Laylatul Qadr, what dua should I say? What is the most important dua for me? And the Prophet ﷺ, he said and he taught her to say, Allahumma inna ka'afu, tuhibbu al-afwa fa'afu anni. Oh Allah, you are afu, you pardons. And you love to pardon, then pardon me. Right? So this is a beautiful dua. Allahumma innaka afu. Stating first the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is afu. He pardons. Tuhibbul af. Not just pardons, but he loves to pardon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves love to pardon. Such a beautiful attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that really makes the hearts of the believers they melt out of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Human beings. When they pardon someone, someone that did something bad or whatever, they, don't, they would still have something in their hearts. But imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love to pardon. تُحِبُّ الْعَفْ فَعْفُ عَنِّي So pardon me. Acknowledging the sin. Knowing that we are sinners. The, the seed of arrogance has to be uh, taken out of our hearts and that's what pollutes the hearts. When a person has this arrogance in him, that he is doing great, that he deserves to enter the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he is such a caring person and so on and so forth. No, we are in need of the forgiveness from Allah. We are weak, we all have deficiencies, we all have weaknesses and we are sinners. We need the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the more the person humble himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives. And that's why one of the destructions one of the acts that destroys the heart of a person, إعجابُ mar'i bi nafsi. When a person likes his, his actions, like himself so much, he likes how he is and how he acts, and whether it's physical appearance or actions, a person like himself. And that's one of the destructions as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-'afu, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that forgives. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that pardons, and he can punish. He's able to punish. Uh, 
and he can pardon subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in surah al-nisa verse number 149 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in tubudu khayran aw tukhfuhu aw ta'fu an su fa inna Allah kana afuwan qadira which is it has warning and glad tidings at the same time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that if you show khayran if you show, if you show goodness or you conceal it or you pardon uh, people with regards to a su or evil and so on indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is afuwan qadira he's the one that pardons and he's the one that is able to do all things so a person might a human being might pardon because he doesn't have any better choice if he doesn't pardon life will become difficult for him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need the human beings he's the one that created them if he punish all of them he would not be committing injustice against them he subhanahu wa ta'ala the one that created them so when he pardons he's not pardoning because of the need of the of the human being he doesn't love to pardon because that would uh, add benefits to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the qadir is the one that is able to do all things so that's also bring the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the heart and that's why when we look into the uh, the, the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala something like al-afaw for example it shows that how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that pardon without uh, re uh, you know punishing punishing for the sin for example or without having anything or or any implications to it whatsoever complete forgiveness and wiping over the sins whatsoever and that's why that sometimes a person might be forgiven but the reminder keeps on coming of the sin that a person did. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-afu. That means he's the one that pardons and al-afu or pardoning should be something that the believers should have towards one another. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the believers فَمَنْ عَفَى وَأَصْفَحْ فَأَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ which means whoever pardons and as a result of that goodness comes as a result of that which is many goodness comes as a result of pardoning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the most forgiver subhanahu wa ta'ala and his rewards will be given the reward will be given to that person without account without limits whatsoever because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love for people to pardon and to forgive others uh, this is as we heard when we when we look into our life and how we are in need of the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every day hundred times for forgiveness as the hadith in Sahih Muslim, Ya Ayuhan Naz, Tubu ila Allah, fa inni atubu ilayhi fil yawm mi atamar. O people, that repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because indeed I repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every day, hundred times. And uh, the, the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, the one that no sins for him, he's been forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And still, and still he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which shows as if this is basically the essence of our job on the face of earth. The essence of al-ibadah, the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to ask for forgiveness. And we see how this is associated with the ibadah itself. When we make our salah, and the first thing that we say after we say salam, after we finish the salah, following the way the Prophet والسلام, used to say, Astaghfirullah, three times. Seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala three times right after the salah, right after the ibadah. After the ibadah, a person might like himself so much he might praise himself, he might feel comfortable, he feels so much tranquility in the heart that he fulfilled the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He might see others and being forgetful and then making their salah and so on, he might like what he's doing. But instead he would say, Astaghfirullah, like a sinner committed a sin, seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the more you are obedient to Allah, the more you have the knowledge, the more a person worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more the person, he would see that he didn't do anything. We can never fulfill the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most high. He's the one that has the perfect names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore to be in need of the forgiveness, this is basically what expiates the sins and what humbles the heart and what purifies the heart. We need to make this as our job. Really, if there's one benefit that we can take from this is that we constantly ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to be pardoned. And when someone is truthful, he will, that person will continuously, consistently uh, 
to the obligations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to do and to seek guidance and to have the actions done with love. You know, one of the things that we really lack in our life and I don't want to take too much of your time and also your uh, sharing with us and your uh, thoughts and with questions and so on. This is definitely important. But one of the things that we really lack in our life, lack in many cases, and that is to do actions with love, with loving attitude. It is not just to do the actions as if this is a duty. When someone is working, doing something, you just do his job. There's a major difference between someone when he works, do his job, when he loves what he does and someone else is just he wants to do the job for the paycheck and he does not really like what he's doing. Major difference in the quality of work and the action itself and so on. We know that the pillars of ibadah in our hearts, there are three pillars to it. One is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the fear of Allah and the hope for the rewards from Allah. So the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the driving force if it's correct to say for the believers when it comes to do the actions of worship, to do it for the love of Allah. You might be tired to wake up for Salatul Fajr, physically tired. And if a human being is focused on his desire, he doesn't want to wake up for the, for the Fajr Salah. But what wakes you up as a believer, even though that you are extremely tired, do you do the ibadah with love, even though you're tired? Or it's done as if it's a burden that a person wants to get it over with? It doesn't mean that when you do it with love, your tiredness would go away. You would still be tired, but your heart is doing it with love. This is not just in the ibadah of Allah. This is in relationships. Relationship between the husband and, and wife. That when the husband is taking care of his wife, because the Prophet ﷺ said, Because the Prophet ﷺ said, Be kind to your wives. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wa bin ma'roof. Live with them with goodness. He's doing that with love with love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore the kindness and the goodness will be totally different than someone wants to avoid trouble. The same thing a wife towards her husband when she's obedient to him, when she goes after his desire and so on and so forth. She's doing that with love. And even if she's tired, even if she doesn't feel like things and so on, but she would do it with love, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants that from her and not to just to be kind so that they would avoid trouble. This is where some, they define it as industrial peace. No, it's the, the peace that is done with love. And therefore, why this is related to the subject of today, Al-Afu and Al-Ghafoor, is that really we need to do our actions with love, with the love of Allah. Hope for the words of Allah, with the fear of Allah. And that would, the more the person does this, the more that he would ask pardoning and forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we can never really fulfill the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our lives even if we do whatever we do. And that's why when we think about these names of Allah, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we should really seek the forgiveness from Allah because we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when a person is not forgiven that means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is angry with him. How can a believer then sustain to live this life knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is angry with him. We do not know that because it's unseen to us, but we have criteria to know. Sins brings the wrath of Allah. And the only way to wipe this away is with forgiveness, seeking forgiveness and to be pardoned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll continue inshallah ta'ala with more of this and, and your uh, also sharing with us your thoughts and so on after the break. So please stay with us. Alhamdulillah, salatu wassalam wa Welcome back. And with the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Afaw, Al-Ghafoor, the one that pardons the most forgiver subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to these names, it's a duty. And we need to do it not just because it's a duty, but because this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves from us. And we have to do things because we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fulfilling the purpose of our life. There are many things really to be mentioned in this. But really we want to focus on how to purify ourselves. There are, to take from this is practically to do something really every day. There are da'awat or supplications that the Prophet ﷺ would never miss every morning and every evening. The Prophet ﷺ would say, Allahumma inni as'aluka al-afwa wal-afiyya. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-afwa wal-afiyya fi dunya wal-akhirah. Oh Allah, I ask you, Al-Afu, I ask you to pardon me. 
and al afiyah strength in this life and in hereafter. Allahumma inni as'aluka al afwa al afiyata fi dini wa dunyaya wa ahli wa mali. Allahumma astur awrati wa amad rawati wa ahfazni min bayni yadayya wa min khalfi wa an yameeni wa an shimali wa min fawqi wa a'udhu bi azamatika an ughtala min tahti. This authentic dua is reported by Ibn Majan in Sunan and it's authenticated by the ulama, one of which is uh, Sheikh Al-Bani rahimahullah. So this is a dua and try to find it. If I said it quickly, try to find it from uh, the books of Adhkar like the Muslim Siddadal, the fortress of the Muslim. Dua to be said every morning and every evening and we should never miss this. And what, as we heard, li, clear, heard it clearly in the dua, Allah man ya'saluka al-afwa wa afi oh Allah, I ask you to pardon me. We have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to pardon us and to give us strength. And then more, Allah man ya'saluka al-afwa wa afi fi dini. Oh Allah, pardon me and give me strength in my religion, in my worldly uh, matters, in my, uh, with regards to my family, to my wealth. Oh Allah, protect me from between my hands, from my right side, from the left side, from above me and not to be uh, killed or harmed from underneath me. Means of protection. The Prophet ﷺ would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for and he used in it al-afu, to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to forgive. When we talk about the forgiveness, oftentimes we think that it has to be you know, to the sinners only. Why are you talking to us about forgiveness? We're, mashallah, uh, good Muslims and we fulfill our rights. As we said before, it's a bad sign if someone says this. If you think good about yourself, you need to really uh, stop doing that. We need to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from that. Because we're weak, we have deficiencies. It's a healthy way to, to look into this life, to constantly ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. And it doesn't mean to have good expectations, of, or to have bad expectations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rather, it's the opposite. Because the more you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with His names and attributes, the more that you would see the weaknesses within our own selves. That makes us humble. And therefore, we would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. So it's always this notion that people think that for those who to ask forgiveness are the sinners, those who have passed uh, of great sins and so on. Who are the ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive everyone. Unless a person commits shirk and dies in that state. But we need to seek the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have to understand that this forgiveness comes with being righteous. And with being constantly repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Takunu Salihin, Fainahu kana lil awabina ghafura. If you are salihin, if you are righteous, indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is to the awabin, to those who always return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with repentance, He is ghafura, He forgives. So we need to be righteous and we need to constantly return to Allah. The verse even, even implies that to be righteous, it doesn't mean that you will be sinless. But to be righteous means that you're constantly returning. If you fall into the sin, if you fall into forgetfulness, if you fall into whatever, away from perfecting the orders of Allah, you need to return. And to return by what? By repenting to Allah. By seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive. So see how this is the most people that are in need of it, are the righteous ones because they are the ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he said wa inni la ghaffarun liman taba wa amana wa amila salihan thumma ahtada. Who are the ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive? Wa inni la ghaffar. Indeed I am the one that forgives to those liman taba for those who repent wa aman and believe wa amila salihan and he do righteous good deeds thumma ahtada then guided then was guided. So these are the people that receive the guidance from Allah. As you see, wa inni definitely, this is by Allah. No doubt, it would never be missed whatsoever for those who repent and believe and do righteous good deeds, thumma hatada, and then guidance. This is where we need to put our foot. This is what we need to really focus on. If we really seek the forgiveness from Allah, we need to repent to Allah. We need to have the proper belief. We need to be among those who are guided. Guidance comes first even though it's mentioned at the end here because this is what we need to continue to be upon, guidance. And to constantly repent and believe and do righteous good deeds. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, Allah man yas'aluka al-huda wa-tuqa wal-afafa wal-ghina. Oh Allah, I ask you al-huda, guidance is first. Wa-tuqa and to have the fear of Allah and to be dutiful to Allah. Wal-afaf comes from al-afu, 
to be chased, to be away from haram and so on. And wal ghina, to be rich. That's mentioned the last because without guidance, there's no benefit and there's no goodness whatsoever. Also, as the ways to expiate our sins, people also think that to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the names al Afu and al Ghafur, the most forgiving, the most pardoning and so on, is to just ask for forgiveness. This is one great aspect, as we said a hundred times, the Prophet ﷺ would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness and the du'as that we mentioned and so on. But also with actions. There are certain actions when we do, it shows that we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pardon. We believe that Allah is the most forgiving, so we do certain actions. As an example, the Prophet ﷺ in a, in a hadith, which is a sound hadith with its shawahid and the, and the like of it, is he mentioned that thalathun mukaffirat. There are three things that expiate the sins. Three actions expiate the sins. What are these three, three actions? Prophet ﷺ said, "Isbaghu al-wudu ala sabarat," which means to perfect your wudu when in matters of dislikes, whether it's because it's cold, you make wudu uh, and you go for the salah, or to be in state of wudu. It's not something that is easy for many people. And it's not difficult when you think about it. Whenever you break your wudu, make wudu. Right? So when you make wudu, and you keep on having wudu, every time you make wudu, that expiates sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive you when you make wudu. How great it is then for the believers when they make wudu. This is one of the, the great signs of the believers in the Day of Judgment. One of the unique things for the Ummah of the Prophet sallam is that the wudu, to, to, to make wudu, this is a sign of being a Muslim. And the Prophet ﷺ would know his ummah, his people in the Day of Judgment with the traces of the wudu in our hands and faces and so on. So this is one of the ways to expiate the sins. To worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-afu al is to make wudu. The second thing the Prophet ﷺ said, وَانْتِظَارُ الصَّلَوَاتِ بَعْدَ الصَّلَوَاتِ That means to wait for salah after salah. That means you go for salatul maghrib for example, and you sit in the masjid to salatul isha. Sit in the masjid to read Quran, listen to a lecture, uh, to the words of Allah, to the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. Our masajid needs to be revived with the ilm, with the knowledge of the deen of Islam. So you go to learn, you go to make ibadah, you go recite Quran, and you have this inside of you that you're doing that to expiate your sins. When you sit in the masjid waiting for the salah, that expiates the sins. Many of us, when we go to the masjid, as if a person is looking like a bird in a cage, he can't wait till he's freed to run away, to go run from the masjid. This is something that we need to change. Yes, people have needs and they need to take care of other rights in their lives and so on. But also there's time that we need to give to be in the house of Allah, to worship Allah, to pray the obligatory salah, to sit in the masjid, to go early for the salah, praying sunnah, reading Quran, waiting for the salah. It expiates the sins, as the Prophet ﷺ said. And the last one mentioned in this narration, وَنَقْلُ الْأَقْدَامِ إِلَى الْجَمَاعَةِ To move your foot to the obligatory salah, to the jama'ah, when you walk to the masjid. Walking to the masjid, expiate the sins. Allah is the most forgiving. This is how to pardon ourselves by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To walk to the masjid. These deeds are goals in our days. This is not just something extra. And the most important thing is to read the news and to know what's happening in the East and the West and so on, as many people think. You know, the real or the most important thing, and I'm not belittling the other things, is, is to go to the houses of Allah. When we look at the houses of Allah, the masajid nowadays in the Muslim world, it's empty, except for those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon. And then we complain about the situations of the Muslims. It's, the reasons are very clear why. The goals in our days and nights are not being fulfilled. We're busy with worldly gains and the like of this and leaving the houses of Allah to be empty, to walking to the masajid expiate the sins. And this is mentioned in the hadith, Should I inform you of what expiate the sins and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate levels of people? If you do, The same three things are mentioned in this other narration. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, فَذَلِكُمُ الرِّبَاطِ فَذَلِكُمُ الرِّبَاطِ This is a ribat These three actions that we just mentioned is guarding the frontiers of the Muslims. 
If you want to be among those who are defending the Muslim Ummah, do these three things. Make your wudu and go to the masajid. Frequently walk to the masajid and wait for the salah after the salah. This is the means to guard this Ummah, to save the religion and to be among those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate their levels. And this is all with the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiver and he's the one that pardons subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the Quran that no matter how much sins you did, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all sins. If you're alive, even shirk is forgiven. The worst sin ever can be forgiven. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-afu and he's al-ghafur subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, they would count for him in the same gathering, in the one majlis, hundred times. He would say, رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي وَتُبْ عَلَيْ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ التَّوَابُ الرَّحِيمُ رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي وَتُبْ عَلَيْ Oh Allah, forgive me and تُبْ عَلَيْ That means make it easy for me to repent and accept my repentance. Because indeed you are التواب الرحيم The one that accept the repentance, the most merciful. So the Prophet ﷺ would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي وَتُبْ عَلَيْ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ التَّوَابُ الرَّحِيمُ So something for us to remember, something that we should uh, try our best to say a lot of it. Right? If you, another thing is, if you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to pardon you, pardon others, forgive others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said uh, in Surah At-Taghabun, when he mentioned the enmity, that wives and children can be upon her husband or vice versa. And this has a story. And briefly is that when the Prophet ﷺ migrated from Mecca to al Madina, And some people, they didn't make the hijrah, the migration of the Prophet ﷺ. And the reason why from, for these people, their wives and their children held them back. They said, you would leave our homes and our wealth and so on and you just go without anything. So they were fitna for them. They were a trial for them. So they were the reason for them not to do this obligation of migrating with the Prophet ﷺ from Mecca to al Medina. So later on when these people migrated to the Prophet ﷺ in al Medina, and they saw the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, those who uh, they migrated from the first point with the Prophet ﷺ, and how they elevated themselves into high levels of virtue, and how the verses of the Qur'an praising them. So they saw this level of virtue and iman and so on, and they felt so much regretful that they didn't migrate with the Prophet ﷺ when they were first invited and called to do so. And they thought to themselves the reason was that our families and our children and, and, and wives and so on, so they wanted to revenge, to divorce their wives or whatever there is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verse in Surah at tawabun يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِنَّ مِنْ أَزْوَادِكُمْ وَأَوْلَادِكُمْ عَدُوًّا لَكُمْ فَاحْذَرُوهُمْ We will believe, indeed from among your wives and children are enemies to you. So warn yourself against that because of what happened. And also a person might, they might be enemies to him even though they are righteous because he is taking the matter so much into committing sins because of his family or whatever. But then amazingly, what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say after stating that some of your wives and children are enemies to you. What, what the enemies they want from you? They want you to be away from the orders of Allah. The enemies of the deen of Islam. What do they want from you, O Muslims? And they're successful into so many different cases of Muslims when they would work so hard to take the Muslimin away from their religion. So this is what the enemies of Allah they want. So you have to warn yourself. So even the closest ones to you, if they take you away from the deen of Allah, they are like your enemies to you. But then what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said afterwards, وَإِن تَعْفُوا وَتَصْفَحُوا وَتَغْفِرُوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ If you ta'fu, this is the afu, if you pardon and you forbear and you forgive, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiver, the most merciful. So be warned, don't ever let anyone, even if it's your wife and your children, and the same thing for the wife, don't ever let, even if it's your husband or your children, anyone, do not let anyone whatsoever make you compromise your religion. The most important and the most valuable thing in your life is your deen, is your flesh and blood. This is your religion. But at the same time, how to deal with ones when, when they are like this? Pardon, forgive, forbear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiver. So one of the means to receive the pardoning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to forgive, is to pardon. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated for us in the Quran clearly, 
you can ask for your rights. Yes, nobody is to blame anyone if they're asking for justice. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَزَاءُ سَيِّئَةٍ سَيِّئَةٌ مِثْلُهَا The recompense of a sayyah, of a sin, a sayyah, a retaliation, but the like of it. If a person is able to do so, if there is you know, th- something that can be implemented to get the like of it only, the laws of retaliation or justice and so on. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمَنْ عَفَى وَأَصْلَحْ فَأَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الظَّالِمِينَ that whoever pardons and aslah as a result of that, rectify the situation, make it upright, then his reward is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love a valimin. So therefore what? Pardon. And as they say, if you're not able to, even if you want your rights, if you know that for you to seek your rights, you might transgress even the smallest amount of transgression, then it's not permissible for you to transgress. That means what's more spacious is to pardon. So pardon people. خُذِ الْعَفْوَ وَأَمْرُ بِالْعُرْفِ وَأَرْضَ عَلَى الْجَهَيْنِ Forgive. When you forgive, Allah will forgive you. This is the, the, the law or the principle of the reward and the punishment is given from the same sort of deed that the person do. There are many things to be mentioned. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-afu. He is the one that pardons. He is al-afur. He is the one that forgives the sins. And we have a duty to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with these names and attributes to seek forgiveness from Allah with our speech and our actions and to humble ourselves and to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that would make us always do deeds with love and seeking rewards from Allah, having the fear of Allah and constantly seeking forgiveness from Allah following the way of the Prophet We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify our hearts and to make us among those those who listen to the speech and they would follow the best of it. And this is one of the characteristics of the believers. So till next time and more means to purify our hearts, I leave you with the protection of Allah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barakatuh. Muhammadin wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.